Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a, oh, almost a classic, a 1997 Toyota Celica convertible. Haven't seen one of these in a long time. It's got the four cylinder, 2.2 liter Toyota Camry engine, automatic transmission, unfortunately. And the owner here, he left me a two page essay on what is. <laughs> what the history of the car is uh, I mean too much information is never a bad thing but his complaint is so basically here's the history you guys can pause and read about it if you want but he's replaced uh, let's see Denso plugs and key wires distributor cap and rotor oil change Rubber air intake, hose assembly, air filter, clean throttle body, fuel injector cleaner, map sensor, thermostat, Dan Denso fuel pump and filter, new parking brake cables, radiator cap, water temperature sensor, new PCV valve. Here's where you come in. Number one fan comes on as soon as the ignition is turned on, whether cold start or whatever. I can live with it, but it's annoying and I prefer it worked as it should. I suspect someone has gone in and wired it this way, okay? AC fan does not come on. I cannot remember if it ever worked. Um, okay, AC does work. Here's the main customer complaint. The car bucks and, and jerks. It feels as though it has a slight misfire. Notice it more on the highway. Speed when driving along I-99. Seems more worse going up hills. Typically at 2500 RPM. It can be very subtle, but it's there. Now and again, it has been pretty severe. Also, no check engine light ever appears. Put your foot down to the floor and it's off like a scolded cat. A lot of maintenance, carny anyways. So only the map sensor, fuel filter, and pump were replaced in relation to the bucking clearly did not work. As regards to cooling fans, blah blah blah. More noticeable speeds of 55 to 60 miles per hour, barely noticeable at 40. Okay. Continued. <laughs> the wiring harness. Uh, okay, blow, he check for a blown head gasket, does not burn oil, no abnormal smoke, it says no fault code stored, I'm through with guessing, the car's been sitting for a while, I suspect fuel contamination, it could be anything, alright, fuel injectors, vacuum issue, ignition timing, O2 sensor, failing cat, transmission, bad ECU, camera crank sensor, whatever it is, I have complete faith, you get to the bottom of what is wrong, Keep it as long as you need. We have other cars in the household. Take it for a test drive on a nice sunny day with the top down. Experience the wind in your hair. It's a fun little car. Really enjoy driving it. Some of the replaced parts are in the trunk. Okay. Cool temperature sensor is replaced. Do not leave the keys in the car. It has this European alarm which went off last morning. Uh, keep the cost low. So hour or two of diagnostic time. I think we should be okay with that. Sorry about the warm piece, but it's important to know a little about the car. <laughs> if you do make a video of it, my wife suggests the title, Celica Saga. I'm hoping for a quick 10 minute episode, definitely not parts 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> okay Rob, it's a Toyota. It's not a Hyundai or a Volkswagen or something, so I think we should, should be uh, in good shape here. So, we got the Varus plugged in, it's a 1997, so it does have an OBD2 port. And let's take a look at these parts. Air cleaner, transmission filter, spark plug wires, fuel pump, some distributor components, radiator cap, Denso, a thermostat, sway bar link, spark plugs, and Ignition and Engine Management Solutions, the premium choice, Spectra Premium, made in China, absolute pressure sensor. So this is the MAF sensor he was talking about. One that lives right here. So you can see the little hose comes to our proudly made in China sensor. So right off the bat, I'm going to reinstall the original one just to eliminate the variable Crappy aftermarket sensors do not belong on any car. And then we'll look at some live data. Take this thing for a spin. It is a nice sunny day, so got the top down. Well, first things first, let's 
change out this junk. Maybe he can return it for a refund. Pretty simple, and <laughs> the old sensor actually has a mounting bracket, which is nice. The new one does not. Let me uh, get a socket. So I think it mounts that way. Little nipple on there. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now let's look at some live data. Uh, quick visual inspection here. We got a puddle of coolant that's been dripping down from probably from the new thermostat housing and engine oil. Oh, well, it's higher than the L mark, so should be okay there. Coolant is full. Ready to roll. So with the key on, fan is definitely on. <laughs> Display the codes. No codes present. History codes. No codes present. Okay. Data. So I pre-selected just the basics. We got RPM, TPS, engine coolant temp, intake air temp looks good, map looks good, fuel trims, and oxygen sensors. Okay, let's fire it up. Map sensor seems to be good. Rev, revs normally. So place your bets now. My first bet is gonna be a lazy upstream oxygen sensor, especially because these older Toyotas, they don't even have a heater on the upstream, so it's just warmed up by exhaust gases. And when we start cruising, we'll see if uh, it's acting up or not. Okay, we're definitely in closed loop. I apologize about the glare. It's a convertible, so you're gonna have to bear with me. Short-term fuel trim about 4%, long-term is at zero. So we'll have to look at our downstream that's waking up. Everything looks pretty good so far. Let's, uh, let's do a zero to 60 here. Like a scalded cat. Just keep driving until it starts bucking or whatever. So I took it for a spin around the block about 10 miles, got up to 60, 65 miles an hour. The car runs absolutely phenomenally well, like a Toyota should. Um, when you're in top gear and the converter is locked up, maybe you can feel a little, you know, power surge. Not really a much of a bucking. So, I mean, the fuel trims are spot on, the oxygen sensor's working great, everything's on the money. The only thing that I can think of that might be a variable here is the EGR system. If that, so old school Toyota, the EGR system is either on or off, and when it's on, the EGR flow is controlled by a little vacuum you know, pod regulator, so you don't get too much flow when um, your intake vacuum is really high, like at idle. Well, idle actually forces the EGR system off. See if I raise the gas, it'll say EGR system on. Oh, 
but they're on off. Probably can't see anything. So we'll take it back to the shop, look at the EG. So we took the car for a test drive. It drives really nicely. There might be a slight surge, you know, under medium throttle when you're cruising on the highway. So um, we'll, you know, do a little more testing on that. I suspect something's up with the EGR system. But let's, uh, let's attack these cooling fans since we know that's broken. And let's fix what's broken first. Take it for a good test drive and then go from there. So, how do these cooling fans work? So there's two fans, one here and one here. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the wiring diagram. So this system is the, uh, the Toyota 3 relay system. And at first it looks kind of confusing. You know, we have our radiator fan motor here our AC condenser fan motor right here and this combination of relays can run these fans in series at low speed or in parallel at high speed and you know what's going on when we turn the key on um, which fan is running it seems like it's running at high speed so we can diagnose this I think straight from these three relays now how do they work what's the logic here so we look up heating and air conditioning condenser fan description and operation. So ignition switch is turned on, relay, uh, the fan number one relay and the fan number two relay are turned on right there. Just key on, both of those relays should turn on. So what happens when both of these relays turn on? So this one's normally closed, relay number one. So when you turn the key on, you get ignition power here, EGI main relay closes, and you get power to fan number two relay coil and fan number one relay coil, which are, the grounds are tied together, they're grounded either through the engine control module or through this AC single pressure switch and the radiator water temp, water temp switch, normally closed. So when the vehicle is cold and the AC pressure is low, these are closed, so that's grounded. So click, click, those turn on. So this actually opens, so the radiator fan motor should not run. This closes, so connects 3 and 5. Uh, if it's open, you can see that this AC condenser fan would be powered on. This is a, a ground. So these two cl click are energized and that actually disables the fans. It's kind of a fail safe. Now, fan number three relay. So this circuit's connected and then this circuit's open. You can see that these fans are now in series and they're waiting for this fan number three relay to click on when you turn on the air conditioning. This comes from the AC compressor clutch. So when you turn the AC on, this relay closes, and now the fans are in series. So actually, I made a little chart here. Key on engine off. Relay 1 and 2 are on. Relay 3 is off. So the fans should be off. They are not. Uh, that's a problem. When you uh, turn the AC on, then all three relays are on, and then the fans operate at low speed in series, so both of them should be on low speed. If the AC high pressure switch opens or the radiator heats up enough to open this temp switch, then you can see the number relays number two and number one turn off, so that's off, off, and it doesn't matter what relay number three does, both fans are going to be on on high speed. So if this ground is broken, this relay goes back to its original state, and if we have power to the fan, it'll be grounded. This relay goes back to its original closed state. If we have power here, it's straight ground. You know, motor gets power, boom, it's grounded. Okay, great. So let's locate these three relays, turn on the ignition switch, and see which fan is on, and go from there. So first, let's locate our components. 
right here in this small relay box, we have fan number two and fan number three relays, so two and three. And then fan number one relay lives in this bigger box. This is fan number one. So this green one, that's fan number one. And this looks like a four pin relay where three and four is the load side. This looks like a five pin relay where three and four are normally connected and five is open. And this one looks like a five pin relay but only three and five are, you know, that's the load side. So they're all different layouts. That's very key. Let's just make sure they're in the right spot. So fan number three relay is this one. Yep. Fan number two relay is this one. That does look like the picture on there. Fan number one relay, three and four should be closed. Yes. I don't know what the default state is, but let's turn the key on and see which fan kicks on. Okay, so key's on. And we just have this one that's running. I'm just going to pull this relay out, the fan number one. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess that's been messed with. Can we pull it out? I don't want to break anything. Let me pull that out. Okay, so when I put this relay in lightly, you hear it doesn't click, and the this fan kicks on. Okay, so what does that mean? If it's normally closed, that means it's not clicking, it's not being energized, and this fan would run all the time. That makes perfect sense. Okay, so, and the ground goes through AC single pressure switch and the water radiator temp switch. Let's check these pins right here, so we know three and four are good, since the fan actually works. Do we have power on one, and do we have a ground on two? All right, so here's pins one, two, three, and four. And on the relay, three and four are the load sides. So if Tesla's connected to the battery ground, finds the power is gonna light up. So pin three should be hot. That's pin three right there. That's definitely hot. And then pin one should be hot from the ignition source. Pin one is on the right side. Hmm. What about pin two? Pin two is hot. So are these reversed or is there something else going on? Let's put a test light to battery positive. You heard the other relay click when that pin was grounded. Okay, so I assume this control side is also tied to relay fan number two relay. Let's check. Let's check number two. Let's pull that out. And A, if we jump three and four, the AC condenser fan motor should turn on. And we're gonna check for power number one and see what's going on in number two. That should be a ground through the AC single pressure switch and the water temp radiator switch. Okay, so Tesla is back to battery ground. Checking pin two, it's bright. So that must be... So these two are reversed. So pin number one here says it's powered up and ignition on, but it's actually on the relay, it's pin number two. So we can leave the test light in there. When we turn the ignition off, that should go out, just to verify.
Yep, that's our ignition source. That pin is good. And from battery positive, this pin on the other side should be grounded, and it's not. That's a problem. Right now, this pin right here should be grounded through AC single pressure switch and water temp radiator fan. Okay. So, we have an issue already on the control side. Something in here, these two switches, suspecting. Now, let's check the load side. So pin 3 should be, you know, if the motor is continuous, we should have power on pin 3 looking for a ground. Pin 3 is right here, the bottom one. Now we don't have that, so perhaps this fan motor is dead in the water. The connector is right here, so the blue and the red should be hot, and the black and white should be going to this relay. Uh, very easy check. I mean, we can disconnect it and see if we have power on this blue and red. Very easy to do. Try and get the connector off. There we go. So that blue and red pin Yes, we do have power going there. So either the fan motor itself is not operational or this black and white wire, I mean it only goes to the relay, is not continuous. Let's, uh, let's put power and ground to this fan motor and see if it runs. Okay, so... <clears throat> Jumper from battery positive going to this condenser fan, blue and red wire. So this is a constant hot feed. If the motor is continuous and this pin right here is looking for a ground, it should at least light our test light. It is not lighting for test light. If we spin the motor, nope, it's it's dead in the water. Perhaps the, the brushes or something are messed up or you know the wiring or something but it's uh, it's dead so this fan is dead that means that if you put them in series the fans will not work however that does not explain why this relay is staying closed when the key is on so we do have two problems we just confirmed that this AC condenser fan motor is not continuous but we don't know why this leg is not grounded so we have to check this AC single pressure switch and this radiator temp um, switch somewhere in the radiator it should just be two wire switches by the way while we're here I want to check wiring integrity from this connector on this black and white wire to pin 3 of relay number 2 that would be from the motor, black and white wire, pin 3 of relay number 2. So again, constant power feed to this wire. And now if it lights my test light on pin 3, which it does, then our wiring continuity is fine. So I wish this relay box was a little more secure. So if I remove my jumper lead, here, steady, if I remove this, test light goes out. Let's locate this AC single pressure switch and the water temp switch radiator fan. See which one of those is open circuit. Okay, well, so what's the next step? First I unwrap this mystery wire. There is a connector there and it's white and black which is usually a ground and a red and white no idea where that goes <laughs> so we'll just leave that there I found another connector I'm just hanging out right here by the headlight and that is a 
blue and black and a white and black. Wait a minute, blue and black, water, temp, switch, radiator, fan. Blue and black, white and black. This is uh, for the 1.8 liter, so we're right here. Um, well, that's interesting. And the radiator temp switch is supposed to live right by this lower radiator hose. Now you can see there's a big plug in place of where the switch is supposed to be. Uh, there's the regular drain plug. You guys can see that. So this plug is, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be a switch. And then this wire is supposed to go down to the switch and be normally closed. So circuit integrity check, just with a test light, connect to battery ground. So basically, if we take out the radiator temp, temp switch, this is going to be looking for a ground. It should be grounded through the normally closed switch. So let's put all the relays back in, ground this blue and black pin and see if anything clicks or if the fan turns off. So this is the blue and black pin right here. Oh, I hear relay number two clicking. I'm sure relay number one would also click if we had it in. So let's pop that in. So let's ground that out. Bingo. Okay, so... That's it for the diagnosis. <laughs> now, what does this car need to be fixed? It needs a condenser fan, and it needs a water temp sensor. So two parts required. Now, if it's on a budget, could we modify the system a little bit so A, the fan is not all the time, and B, that the fan actually comes on when the AC is on and it comes on when the temperature is high so the car doesn't overheat. So I believe the engine control module can turn these fans on through um, you know through this ground wire. I'm just wondering Because this is normally closed, that's normally closed. This is grounded all the time. What is, what's the purpose of this wire? Let's say it's open, what does the engine control module do? It's like, hey, we're in a hot condition, fans are on, do we what, reduce engine power? Is it a, just a signal wire? Because it's definitely not a control wire. This is at zero volts all the time. So you can't really feed voltage on there. You really need this water temp switch, I think. I really think that's the case. Now what if we just short out these two pins? Well then, if the car overheats, this won't open, and the car is just going to overheat. <laughs> I, there's no other way to turn these fans on. So I think that's... I mean, the car's doing what it should. If this is open, fan's on all the time. So it needs an actual radiator, you know, coolant temp switch. I'm going to tell that to the owner. I'm going to say there's no real way to fix this except for fixing it the right way. And fixing it the right way is usually the best way to go. Especially when it comes to drivability. I mean, keeping your engine cool is very important. If it was some silly accessory, then, yeah, you can work around it but this in this case it's safer to have the fan on all the time as it is right now and then when he gets a new switch he'll put it in and then it'll work normally and he needs a new fan so that's the diagnosis on the cooling fans let's take it for a spin and see about this stumbling problem